Praising God, I want to thank you, Pastor, and all of you for you for joining the Bible study. And we are going to complete Acts nine chapter today, and we will be entering into the tenth chapter next time when we meet. There are many characters. It's a character study chapter, Acts nine. So many. and we met with saul in the beginning then we visited judas house where we met judas and also ananias then we had a fellowship with the barnabas then we met enias then dorcas a peter was in the middle we are going to talk about him today then simon the tana today we are going to talk about peter sincere peter the word sincere comes from the latin word sinci which means wax without wax sincere means without wax without any defilement impediment sincere truthful faithful peter and uh, in the new testament next to jesus it was simon peter who occupies most of the new testament then paul mm. and today we are going to look at peter in different dimensions and we are going to revise and repeat the things that we have already studied through the ninth chapter repetition is good paul says i say repetition is very good the apostle paul says to philippians it is not tedious for me to repeat things again and again because it will be beneficial to you it will be good for you so repetition we will check our notes and we will brush our brains and restudy the things that we have already studied anything we have forgotten we are going to remember it so that whatever we study will sink into our system it is a character chapter we are going to look at peter in different dimensions and we meet him in three occasions three situations he is a man of power he is a faith healer he is a crowd puller he is a preacher on the day of pentecost pull 3000 people 3000 were saved then 4000 then multitude very very popular preacher and on some point he was able to walk on water and he had a great power on his tongue when he uses his tongue power flows chapter 3 layman walked chapter 5 a couple dies there is power in the power and authority in the tongue the bible says in the book of proverbs very powerful man always in his life he was on the limelight very rarely he goes into obscurity when stephen philip those fellows were in obscurity serving god in a very humble way this man peter was always on the limelight but in the ninth chapter we see him going into the obscurity to serve the lord in three different situations three different situations how come he he was able to go into obscure situations what are the factors that paved the way for his readiness to meet with people or visit places they seem to obscure he was prepared that is the first reason he was prepared to go anywhere everywhere to meet up with anybody to give solution to anybody or solve any problem or preach the gospel to the parish masses wherever they are found bible says in second timothy 42 in season and out of season we should be willing to meet with people and preach the word 
whatever place you show me, I'm ready to go. That is Peter. And again, what are the factors that motivated him to visit anybody or everybody or any place? First factor. It is a commission. How many parts you are going to say? Maybe six or seven? Oh, then take the notes learn. First of all, the first is and the first factor that enabled him to visit anybody. Any mission field he is the commission. The commission of God, the command of the Lord. And he said, go into all nations. I will be low. I am always with you. Go low to words. Go into all the nations. Lo, I am with you. The law is preceded by a go. If you go in the name of the Lord to serve God, lo, he is always with you. In order to have the presence of God, keep the presence of God, guard the presence of God, we need to go in the name of the Lord, wherever he asks us to go. There is a commission, Acts 1.8. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive my power and he will, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and everywhere. Commission of God, commission of the triune God, the Father commissions, the Son commissions, the Holy Spirit commissions, whatever the Father God, God says, who shall go for me? Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Triune God. He says, who shall I send? I, singular. Who will, for, who, will for, who will go for us? Us, plural. Commission of the triune God. He sent Jonah to Nineveh. And he is going to send Peter in the next chapter to the Romans. Rome. The Father God sends, the Son of God sends. As my Father has sent, I send me. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. I send you. John 20. Verse, find it for yourself. Jesus sends. He sent. The living God of the Bible is a sending God. Initially, he sent Israel into the world, then he sent uh, prophets, then he sent his own son, then in the son sent 12 apostles, in addition to that he sent 70 other disciples also. The Holy Spirit is also sending God, the Father sends, the Son sends, the Holy Spirit sends, the commission of God, triune God. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will go. He sends you to people who have to know the name of the Lord Jesus and also know the gospel and also know the word of God. The Lord God, the Holy Spirit sends. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit, his own personality. And he sends the people, John 20, 21, John 17, 18, he sends. So the Father God sends, Son of God sends, the Spirit of God sends. I already told you the living God of the Bible is a sending God. Paul says, he sent me. I am an apostle. Apostle means one who is sent out. Are you an apostle? <laughs> You may deny, but you are sent out because you are called out. Where? First Peter 2 9, you are called out of darkness into marvelous light. You are called out of darkness into marvelous light. Darkness, sin. Marvelous light, Jesus. You are turned away from sin and turned to God. Why? In order to proclaim his goodness. If you are a born again person, if your sins are forgiven, you are a sent out person. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people that belongs to God. First Peter 2.9. You are a chosen generation. 
chosen for what? To preach the gospel to the perishing masses. Royal priesthood, you. Not only Paul Raj and Livingston. Royal priesthood, we believe in the priesthood of all believers. Very fast, Pastor. We believe in the priesthood of all believers. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people that belongs to God. The Son of Man came to seek, save, and serve. Seek and save? Luke 19, 10. Serve? Mark 10, 45. And also 1 Timothy 1, 5. Commission of God. That was instilled in the heart of Simon Peter. So wherever he sends, he follows his order, commission commands, and goes in the name of the Lord. So the first factor that enabled him to go anywhere to preach the gospel, teach the word is a commission. Commission of the Lord. Secondly, the second reason is the crying need. The global need is a crying need. Crying need. People without Christ perish every day. They go to hell. If they do not have Jesus in their heart, they are already living a hellish life. They will reach hell, the Bible says. There is a difference between heaven and hell in the Bible. Regarding heaven, the Bible says there is still more place. Still more place in heaven. Because the number of people reaching heaven is very little, very small. What about hell? Hell is opening up its mouth without any measure. Bible says in Isaiah, Pastor, chapter and verse, find it for yourself. You need to do some homework now. Hell is open, opens up its mouth without any measure. That means the number of people who are getting into hell is increasing. Day by day, even the created hell is opening up daily without any measure. The global need is a crying need. Aeneas, he visits. Dorcas, Tabitha, he visits. Simon the Tanner, he visits. Extraordinary people, ordinary people. Very ordinary people. Aeneas had a disease. Dukas is already dead. Simon the Tanner, a despised person. A person who has a disease. A person who is already dead. And a despised person. Simon Peter is willing to visit. All these people. Crying need. So he visits. The third factor, the third motivation... Motivational reason is compassion. Compassion of Christ. Compassion. Compassion of Christ. You are cooking rice. Take a prestige pressure cooker. And you put rice, double the water, cover it with the lid, and also the whistle, the upper knob. When the water is at its zenith boiling, the whistle no, makes a lot of noise, jumping and dancing. Because there is a lot of constraining within the pressure cooker. Paul says, the love of Christ constrains us. When you are filled with the love of Christ, the compassion of the Lord, you cannot remain in your place. You will run for souls. Compassion, Pastor. Once upon a once upon a time, no, when I was born again, when I was saved, when I was declared to be a born again person, I had that compassion. Now I am losing that. Now I am leaking that. Why? How shall I receive it back? How shall I regain it back? Simple. Romans five five. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. God's love is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Spirit, that means dominated by the Spirit, that means 
empowered by the spirit that means then you are permeated by the spirit you have that love you have that compassion that fills you that dominates you the love of christ will compel you to go to people you will volunteer to people you will volunteer to talk about jesus christ okay. you may not be very sure whether whether they like it or not whether they will accept it or not still your answer about to god no for the compassion invested in you instilled in you you will move that lid that uh, knob that will jump no whistling like that you will jump with joy with the burden for soul burden for soul do you have we already talked about it long back burden for soul do you have the burden for soul last it time how to receive it how to regain it matthew 1128 you know by heart next verse matthew 1129 you don't know no then you flip through your pages no refer your bible 28 words matthew 1128 come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest go to the lord jesus go to the cross leave the burden there burden of sin not any burden la rest no rest <laughs> jesus says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden i will give you rest go to the cross leave your burden no rest why next verse 29 take my yoke what is a yoke a burden 28 is burden of sin 29 is burden for souls 28 sin burden 29 soul burden when burden of sin is removed from a particular heart burden for soul is automatically created in that heart spontaneously formed in that heart sin burden is removed soul burden is added that is a secret if you think that you don't have the burden for soul if you don't have the burden for souls then that means you have sin in your life how to receive it or regain it confess your sin cleanse yourself with the blood of jesus once again come to the throne of, throne of grace come to the throne of grace he will refill you he will recharge you so the first reason is command commission of the lord second reason is a crying needs of the humanity mankind human kind third reason the third reason is concern for souls i already talked about i already told you about matthew 11 2829 concern for souls why i am concerned about myself only why should i be concerned about other people i mind my business why should i mind others business it is not others business it is god's business who do you talk you are going to talk to a person who is created in the image of god to the image of god you are going to talk you are going to talk to a person who is bought with a price the shed blood of jesus christ a person who belongs to the blood of jesus you are going to talk you got the you are going to talk to a person who has the life of jesus given talk to a person no respect a person because of the mainly three things what are the three things image blood and life respect don't despise you must have the concern for perishing masses even a person who is in hell even a person who is hell live no alive he has burden for souls do you know that now you are under the fan or in a air conditioned situation not in the hellish fire 
Do you have the burden? That fellow who is in hellfire, he prays to Abraham, Luke 16. Father Abraham, you send Lazarus who is in your bosom, lap. Send him to my family. I have five brethren there, unrepentant. You send him there, he may preach the gospel to them. To them. They should not come to this hellish fire. Send him there to be an evangelist. The fellow who is being destroyed, the fellow who is suffering in hell, he has a burden for his brethren. You are not in that situation now. You are okay. Are you preaching the gospel to your neighbor, to your servant, to your friend or relative, to a co-traveler in the bus or train? You must have the concern for souls. And fifthly, what is fifthly? I missed one point, Pastor. Okay. Number one, commission of the Lord. Secondly, crying needs. Thirdly, compassion of Christ. Fourthly, concern for souls. Fifthly, fifthly, coming of the Lord. Either he will come at any time or we will disappear at any time. Either he will come or he, he will go. Either one of these will happen at any time. Ready for the last moment by being ready every moment. Be ready for the last moment by being ready every moment. Any time he will come or we will go. And we cannot bypass, we cannot bypass judgment. Whatever we have done, good or bad, we are going to be judged. We are going to be judged, judgment seat. We will be judged for our actions, works, deeds. Revelation 20, verse, find it out. Then we will be judged for our words. Matthew 12. We will be judged for our thoughts, thought life. First Corinthians 4. We will be judged for our secrets. Romans 2. The coming of the Lord is nigh at any time. We will be judged. One of the things the Lord will ask, I have done so much for you. Left everything for you. So much I have given you. What did you do for me? What did you do for me? Did you come here with an empty hand? What did you do for me? Coming of the Lord. Judgment. In the light of those things, we need to do the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the word. That is our bounden duty. One more thing. Call from the non-Christians or unbelievers. People near us are far away from us. They need the gospel. They need the gospel. And we don't feel the need. They need the gospel. They come in a different manner. They paraphrase their need in a different manner. They need Jesus. They need Christ. For the every problem, they need a solution. The solution is salvation. The solution to every problem is salvation. Crying need and the crying call from outside. A plea come over and tell us. Macedonian call came to Paul. Come over and help us. A pleading request came to Philip from the Greek-speaking people. Sir, we want to see Jesus. So many people need Jesus, whether they know it or not. Whether they feel the need for Jesus, whether they ask you or not, they need. They need other people, 
the next door people people who are near you studying with you working with you doing business they need so these are the factors motivations peter had to serve everybody anybody in the world otherwise a popular man a limelight man crowd pull a miracle worker he will not go to ordinary people enes a man with the disease a paralytic docas sick then died simon the tanner stinking situation event even because he was simply forced to buy we are part by incited by these six factors what did he do what did peter do in that ninth chapter several things when a call came 38 verse and since leader was near jopa he was in jopa when and since leader was near jopa and the disciples heard had heard that peter was there they sent two men to him imploring him call not to delay in coming to them not to delay why they are asking me why they are calling me why are they why they are sending for me they did not give a reason simply they call peter did not delay he rushed why he rushed without any delay love of christ constraining that is the reason that is the reason we want to know much about love of christ you can read first corinthians 13 first john 4 and john 13 there are love chapters love chapters what are the pastor number 1 first corinthians 13 number 2 first john 4 Number three, John thirteen chapter, from beginning till the end, the Lord loved the disciples. Said, Peter was a very high personality, but he was ready to go into the obscurity to serve God, to serve God's people, remembering the fact that they were created in the image of God, bought with the price with the blood of Jesus, and also life was. given to them with the sacrificial love peter went there with the sacrificial love because he is a man on the light light he can go anywhere any town now where he goes sacrificing jopa very good it was like go go it's like bombay it's like bangalore it's like pune jopa good lida ordinary village then sharan another village small village then sea side tanner stinking place sacrificial man ready to go anywhere be ready to go anywhere the sacrificial love love means sacrifice god so loved the world how how he loved the world he gave he is only begotten son gave means actually the right translation is not gave the right translation is gave up god so loved the world that he gave up his only begotten son gave up means sacrificed he sacrificed his only begotten son if you love somebody no you will sacrifice love is not an emotion it is a reality in action love sacrifices what sacrifice you did today i'm not asking you by yesterday not going to ask, to ask you what you are going to do tomorrow what sacrifice you did today your time your treasure your talent mm-hmm. anything you sacrifice in order to show the love of christ that is instilled in your heart and he humbled who peter peter humbled the proud fellow no once upon a time very proud fellow a talkative fellow all other disciples are on the boat this fellow wanted to walk on the water proud exhibiting himself 
He was an exhibition most of the time. I, I, I. That was his driving force. I will never, I will never deny you. I will never run away from you. I will die for you if needed. I, I trouble. Now we have computer, no? We have computer, laptop, and um, smartphone. We type. We type. Those days, we don't have typewriter. We sorry. We don't have computer. We had only typewriter. We had only typewriter. All the letters were there. A to Z. Mm. One letter, mostly used, often damaged and replaced was I. The typewriter repairing people, they say that. Only one letter, mostly used and often damaged and replaced was I. This fellow humble, how? 40th verse. But Peter put them all out and knelt down. Knelt down. Humbling himself. Humbling himself. Is it a new character of... Uh, is it a new character in him? He was simply remembering his past. Who was I? Who am I is not very important to me now. Who was I? I was a very ordinary fisherman. And even I did not know how to catch fish. When the Lord called me initially in the first time, he helped me how to catch fish. Luke 5. Fisherman. Then, how much he has studied? School, college. Uh -huh. Acts 4.13. Illiterate, untrained. Very ordinary man. Denied himself three times. Sorry, denied Jesus three times. Three times denied the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I will never deny you. I will never disown you. Even if I have to, even if I have to die for you, I will die. I will never deny. He denied. All that he thinks now, when he thought about his past life, and especially sinful life. <laughs> sinful life? Yes. John 13. Jesus was washing the feet of the disciples one by one. And this man, our Simon Peter, was watching, not coming forward. Every time he will come forward to say something, talk something. That time he was simply shrinking, not coming forward to show his feet. <laughs> But Jesus did not leave him. He simply asked him to show his feet. And Simon Peter said, no, no, it should not happen. You should not wash my feet, he said. What is that, humility? Uh -huh. Let us see. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you don't have any part with me. Then Lord, wash my feet, wash my hands, wash my head. What the? Remembering all the sins committed through the feet, through the hands, through the head. Imagination. Lot of sins in imaginations. All one by one. He only knows about it. Jesus knows about it. Wash my entire being. All that he remembers, you know. When he remembers who he was, humbling himself. When we remember our personality, what is our personality? Dust. We are dust, the Bible says. Psalm 103. Pastor, today you are not going to pointing out the verses. Yes. You should do some homework. No. Always I am telling. And he humbled himself and he also prayed. Kneeling down, he prayed. 40. Again. But Peter put them all out. He knelt down and prayed. A praying man. Why he prayed? They should know. Who are they? They are the people around him. They should know. It's not me. It's God who heals. Who raises. 
the dead people not me but he praise to god who alone can do miracles the miracles and with faith he prayed he faith he orders also and turning to the body he said for the tabitha rise and she opened her eyes and when she saw peter he sat up faith miracle happened through faith was it a strong faith can yes strong faith how it comes faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of god romans 10 17 what do you think first of i don't have a strong faith now my faith is very much weak how to have a very strong faith assistant pastor visits the families and is visiting day one by one finally he visits a very old lady 85 years old looking at her face he was so pleased so joyful because he saw the grace of god the light of god and the glory of god on her face he says to her amma i think your face is shining today your faith should be very strong is it it she replied no pastor my faith is very little but the little faith i have placed on a great god my god is great my faith is small i placed my faith on the strong god that is a secret of my shining face happiness joy are you having a very weak faith don't worry just read and meditate on the word of god see that your face is your faith is placed on god who is the greatest small faith in a great god and he was ready in season who peter he was ready in season and out of season any season when people call it goes with a open heart with a open hand he was ready to serve the people god's people so number one he was prepared number two he was patient he was patient in all the three incidents three occasions three situations whether it is the situation is a stinking situation or a smelly situation or with a bird order ready patient visiting anius patiently a paralytic person they do everything on his bed only not only eating but also cleaning and also changing the clothes and also the bathroom toilet things and changing pampers everything it is ready and also he is patient observing that sick man paralytic docas sick lady then dead there to the dead people jews jewish people will not visit they will not touch the body and peter was a fanatic jew when there met with the lady raised her from the dead touched her the bible says tanner terrible last week we, we talked about him with a small crowd tanner sing in situation he was simply working with the dead animals carcasses and also skins when there when there and dealt with him talked with him stayed with him for a long time the bible says for a fanatic jew visiting the person he said taboo it is forbidden but this man peter was patient endurant even there looking at jesus jesus would go there he will go to visit the publicans he will go to visit the lepers and eat with them following the master following the master zacchaeus publican matthew publican publicans are not allowed in the temple of the lord but the lord of the temple jesus visits them they cannot visit the temple but the lord of the temple visits them following the master 
following the footsteps of Jesus. Not to save the righteous. The Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. But also Christ Jesus came into the world to save saints, uh, to save sinners, the Bible says. And he's called the friend of the publicans. The friend of the publicans. He was not impatient with those people, especially the three people that we met with. Who are the three people? Aeneas, Docas, and the Tanner. Ready to visit them. Ready to love them. A visitor visited Mother Teresa in her orphanage, a very large orphanage in Calcutta and branches all over India, in Bombay also. She's no more now with the Lord. When the visitor visited her for an interview, he saw her taking the vomit of a very old man. Even that man, the visitor, he twisted his face. What is he? There are workers, there are chowkidars, there are servants, there are menial workers, they can do it. Why should she? A great woman, directly as a first question, he asked her, why do you do that? There are other people who can do it. She replied, I do it for Christ. <laughs> that man is created in the image of God. I serve the image of God. Where is she now? Mother Teresa. Heaven or hell? Heaven. In the heavenly places. Pastor, yes. A servant of God. A great servant of God. Pastor, one thing we want to ask you, you know, what? The RC people, no? Roman Catholic Church people. Will they go to heaven? Lord, don't look down on them. The only condition for going to heaven is number one. Repentance, if they have repented. Number two, if they have received the Lord Jesus as their personal savior. Number three, if they are in loving relationship with the Lord Jesus. Repentance, receiving, and the relationship. That will take them to heaven. They are in heaven if they are repentant people, born again people. Don't undermine those people. Don't look down on them. They are the people. Who are the people? RC people. Roman Catholic Church people. They are the people who gave you the Bible you have in your hand. You have selected only 66. Though they are keeping all the 80. They have given you the church history. Do you know church history? You got the church history, the Christendom, the church history from them only. You have the creed, no? How many you have? Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, Athanasian Creed. All creeds belong to them. They passed on those creeds to you. You use them in your Methodist church, in your Anglican church, in your CSA church, CNA church. Creeds belong to them. We borrowed many an order of worship, orders of worship. They belong to them. And we shortened them. We modified them here and there. But originally, the worship orders, orders of worship, they belong to the prayer books, the book of common prayer, the book, book of common prayer. Belongs to them originally. Little modified here and there. So many things. Pastor, they are idol worshippers, no? They are worshipping Mary. They have one Mary. We have 1,000 Marys. What did I say? They have only one Mary. We have 1,000 Marys. I am not repentant. I will not repent. I don't want to be born again. But I have a need. I have a need. My problem should be solved. So I will talk to him. I will call him. I will write to him. I will ask him for prayer help. Not wrong, but wrong. When? If he say that you will not repent, only for the sake of a need, you go to that particular person. Pastor, preacher, prophet, anybody. He is your idol. Any person, anything that takes the person, place of 
Jesus is an idol. It is an idol. So they depend upon Mary. Okay, wrong. You depend so many Marys thinking that your prayers will not be answered. You have to depend upon other person only. Like a blind man. Are you blind? <laughs> your blind man needs a stick to walk. Your blind man needs another person's shoulder to be dependent. He needs a stick or a shoulder depending upon them to walk. Why? Blind. Are you depending upon other people's faith in order to make a living? Blind. Repent from your sin and receive the Lord Jesus as your personal savior. There are so many idols now. The Bible talks about. First of all, it is an idol statue. We don't do it because God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. We don't make any idol. The statue. Mm -hmm. Bible doesn't recommend first three commandments or the ten commandments against idols. Mammon. What is mammon? Materialism is an idol. Colossians 3.15. Are you a materialistic person? Idol. You are an idol worshiper. Jewelry. Jewelry, gaining and receiving and saving a lot of jewelry is an idol. Genesis 35. An unbeliever is an idol. If you marry an unbeliever, you are marrying an idol. Second Corinthians 6. Rebellion is an idol. What is rebellion? Unrepentant life. No, no, I will not repent. Even if Billy Graham comes to preach to me, I will not repent. Rebellion. What is rebellion? Unrepentant way of life. First Samuel 15. Hero worship is an idol. They have only one hero or heroine. We have so many heroes. Love. So many heroes. We got their pictures. We simply make mimicry of their voice also in our preaching, in our prayer. Hero worship is an idol. Anything that takes the place of God, Jesus, is an idol. Accept anybody or everybody in the name of Jesus because they are bought with a price, created in the image of, in the image of God. And this man, Simon Peter, first of all, he was prepared. Secondly, he was patient. Thirdly, he prolonged. He prolonged his stay, extended his stay. Where you read? About Simon the Tanner, 43rd. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa in a stinking area with Simon and Tanner, many days. He prolonged his stay. He extended his stay. He did not look down on that particular place. He stayed for a long time. Why he stayed for a long time? Last time we narrated the reasons. Shall I tell one by one quickly to take rest? He was toiling and moiling. For the Lord Jesus, in terms of the gospel and the word, he needs rest. Human being, no. Physical rest, emotional rest, spiritual rest. He needs time to praise God and pray to God. He, need to, he needs to develop his prayer life. Rest is needed. Days are needed. So many people, so many people he has dealt with, not only the three, but also people who came there to see the people. He had to do some follow-up, do personal evangelism to stay there because the waiting time should not be a waste of time. He should equip them, train them for better work. Maybe he has to appoint them as leaders in the local area. Then self-examination. Simon Peter, self-examination. Any wicked thing, thing in me, any wrong thing in me, any wrong motives in me, in my ministry, Lord, correct me. I want to examine myself. You do the corrections. You help me walk worthy of your calling. Waiting for his guidance and orders for the future. The waiting time should not be a waste of time. He was simply brooding over God and his word. And Jesus' lifestyle, gathering materials. What material? During the time of waiting, he was gathering a lot of materials. Later on, he's going to write now. Later on, he's going to write two letters. First Peter, second Peter. Cannot write, illiterate. Depending upon John Mark. Later, we will see that fellow. 
And John Mark helped him to write First Peter and Second Peter. And Peter did not want to waste his time. He did not want to waste his time. The waiting time, the extend, the prolonged time he used it for his good and for his glory. Shall we look to God in prayer, closing our eyes? Loving Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time of fellowship and our study. Thank you, Lord, for this personality, Simon Peter. We have learned so many things through his life in the first five chapters. Here in the ninth chapter also a little bit. And we are going to learn about him more in 10th chapter, 12th chapter, 15th chapter and other chapters. Help us, Lord, in our Christian life and ministry to be prepared for at any time and also to be patient with people and also spend our time for the glory of God and for the good of the people around us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.